Okay, it says we're going live now. There we are. Uh, say You're live. Okay. There we are. Hello. <laughs> Hi there. I'm I'm sharing now. <laughs> to all my peoples. To all your peoples. I hope we get a good viewership from Tonga. Absolutely. <laughs> and around the world. And around the world. Cool. I'm That's it. Just, I've shared to my people. <laughs> Good evening, good evening, Facebook viewers. Good evening, Facebook fam. I'm so excited um, for, a, for another session of Seeds of Hope. And I just want to say on behalf of the team, a very warm welcome um, from my colleagues, Richard and Patrick, a very warm welcome and myself, Nishani Ford. We're very excited to have you with us. And we are thrilled today to have um, Segrin Govinda join us, our first male speaker on this series. So welcome, Segrin. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Sagan is a um, in the engineering field, and he's had over 30 years experience in the corporate space. Um, and he is also an author, a speaker, a coach. Um, and for the last 10 years has led successfully a sales team as well. So we're very thrilled to uh, be chatting to you and to be tapping into your your nuggets of wisdom. Um, welcome. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. This is awesome. Yeah. Happy to be the first male speaker as well. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited because we went to high school together. Um, Absolutely. And, and it was so good to uh, to reconnect in this space and almost feel like we're flying the, the Tongan High uh, flag again um, because you were into gymnastics and quite athletic back in school. And uh, we were one of the first cheerleaders, uh, a group of girls. I remember. And I... <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah, so um, a warm welcome. And uh, yeah, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Let's talk about some school days. And um, yeah. Yeah, it was awesome because when, when you connected with me, uh, all the memories of the school days came back as well. And what was really exciting is, um, I was off Facebook, uh, actually was off Facebook, and I just got on to, uh, yeah. to promote the book because, as you mentioned, I'm just recently published. And while, pub while on Facebook uh, promoting the book, all the old friends started to reach out uh, again, uh, you being yes. one of them. And so, yeah, when, we, when I finished school, I must admit I did not have a clue what I was going to do with my life. Uh, we did not have the internet. We did not really have uh, career counselors uh, yes. back in the day. So I don't know if the post is still around, the, the newspaper. But, yes, it uh, is. Is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Because uh, when I finished school, I was paging through the post and I saw a little article in there for electronic engineering. Yes. And uh, yeah, so I went to Emil Sultan and um, got my diploma in uh, electronic engineering and spent five years at Maidstone Sugar. So started off my career quite sweet. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I was in Tongat for the first five years of my career. And then I left to join Omgeni Water, where I was there yeah. for eight years um, in the uh, automation field. Yes. And for the past 16 years, I'm with an American company. You know, we're like in over 100 countries around the world, as yeah. you've mentioned. Um, for the past decade, uh, I've led many sales teams, uh, high performance sales team. Uh, so the coaching comes out in there. Um, one of the things I really love is uh, is travel, and yeah. uh, and and with this job, I get to do that. Um, oh, great! As you mentioned as well. I'm I'm a speaker. I'm I'm a coach. And one of the things is that like people people in a corporate job. You know, they, they worry and they uh, wish I was doing something else. And uh, I went through that for many years as well uh, in a corporate job, but wanting to leave and do speaking and do coaching. And one day it just clicked, hang on, yeah, I can do that in my job. So mm. I get paid to travel. I get paid to stand in front of people and talk. I get paid to coach people. Yes. So I get that in my job. So yeah. So, so that's pretty awesome. And, and, I, and I encourage people to do that as well. If they have a passion, if they want to do something, see if you can live it in your current career. Um, if you can't, then you start to make plans to 
to look for that. Mm -hmm. mm. And, and, and on the personal side, uh, yo, I'm married for many, many years now. Uh, yes, Jennifer. My son, my son is uh, 23, my daughter is 19. Uh, yes. So they, they're, they're both studying uh, at the moment. And I always say, if you, uh, if you manage to bring up a teenage daughter, you could do anything in the world. So. <laughs> or a teenage son in my case. Or a teenage son. Oh, yeah, I know your yeah. story. <laughs> yeah, it's mm. not for the faint-hearted, uh, I Absolutely. must say. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I also started thinking about, um, about Tongat, about Tongat High. And it was so funny because that's how Succeed started. Um, you know, the nonprofit that that started started when uh, it was we were at a 30 year reunion last December and wow. one of the class projects. So Richard wanted to do a class project and I um, volunteered to, to kind of help him with that. And uh, so we kind of co-led a class project for um, Haven of Rest at, in Break Village. Oh, yes. And yes, yes. And wanted to go back and, and give back to the community you know, that, that gave so much to us. And uh, that's how Succeed was born. That was, that was the inception. We started working together. We went back, we did a class project and uh, just really wanted to, to be able to give back as well to, uh, to the community there. Yeah. That's, that's quite amazing because when we were back in school and we were giving projects, yes. we do the projects at the last minute and now 30 years later, you guys are volunteering for projects. <laughs> And such is life 30 years later. So, yeah. you know, you, you speak about industrial automation. Mm. What is that? I mean, you know, I didn't leave the post, so I didn't apply for, for that. <laughs> the, the, the funny thing is, before I get to industrial automation, when, when, I, when I got to tech, I did not mm. have a clue. Um, yeah. I jumped into the train in Tonga, and it was like yes. a one-hour ride all the way to Bria Station. Yes. And then ask people, how do I get to ML Sultan? Yes. So when I got yes. there, uh, there, there were two camps. There was uh, um, an electronic engineering camp, and there was a what we call an instrumentation and control camp. Right. So I went to both of them, and the instrumentation and control guys were very boring. So they did a bad yeah. sales job for their yeah. for their field. And, but the uh, the electronic engineering guys had a computer hooked up to a piano, and every time they yeah. pressed a key. You know the screen changed and that yeah. hooked me so i ended up studying the electronic engineering part of it but when i was trying to find a job back in our mm -hmm. day you could either apply to telcom or sabc for for yeah. that and um could i didn't get in either so but my dad uh fortunately he was working for tonga Chilet sugar yeah and uh, he put my cv in to tonga Chilet sugar and i ended up at maidstone Mill. Now, yeah, I studied one thing, but I'm doing training on something else. Yes. So I went back to tech and I asked them, you know what, can I do all my subjects for instrumentation and control? And yeah. they did not uh, offer it on a part-time basis. So mm. I had to enroll on the full-time basis, not attend lectures, uh, go in and write the tests and exams. So I got yeah. all those credits out of the way. Now I'm in the instrumentation and automation field. So when we get into that, if you look at the everyday uh, items around you, you look at yeah. like a carton of milk, uh, you look at a packet of chips, cool drink, all of these uh, items are manufactured in a factory. Yes, right. Um, so, so there'd be uh, raw materials coming in, there'll yeah. be some, some sort of process, and, mm. and then they will get packaged, and eventually it gets to us. So yeah. back in the day, that was a very manual process to do that. So... Automation, now we put technology into the production lines and we automate that entire process. Mm. So to give you typical examples of my customers are huge companies like Unilever, Toyota, Umgeni yeah. Water. And, and I always like telling the story of Umgeni Water and then, then you can picture it properly. So you have uh, an operator sitting in a control room and the water comes in dirty and yeah. it has to be purified. Chemicals has to go into it and chemicals right. going to, has to go in at the exact quantity and then it has to get to the customers. Now, with just a click of the mouse, the operator can control equipment kilometers away and he can control the plant as, as the uh, change, uh, the plant is changing as yes. well. So in a nutshell, that's what it is. You know, we bring uh, technology 
to manufacture everyday everyday products. Mm. Mm. I mean, and that that then just has such great bearing in our daily lives. So it's probably yes. engineering is everywhere. Absolutely, it is everywhere. Um, you know, it it. I think of a story as well because when uh, I was in a marketing event once, and um, I had engineers sitting in there. Yeah. I love standing in front of people and and talking. So on this occasion, I was there to talk about the products. Yeah. But I did ask them as well. You know what what are you introduce yourself your name what yeah. do you do and they went around the room and everybody said i'm an engineer yeah and i said so do you enjoy your job yeah some days some days mm -hmm. not uh, you know that sort of thing and then i asked them do you know the impact of your job though mm -hmm. and they were like you know like, what do you mean and so i went around and asked them well what products do you manufacture and just in a nutshell because the story can take an hour but just in a nutshell you know, the one guy, they were manufacturing tires. And I said, do yes. you know that you keep people safe on the road? Yes. You keep, you know, you, you get uh, families to work. You get children to school. Yeah. You take people on holidays. Oh, I never saw it that way. And then yeah. there was a, another guy, you know, he was working for Nestle. And we went the same story. I said, you know, there's people who don't have their coffee in the morning and uh, they can't start their day. You yeah. help people start their day. Do you know that? <laughs> Gosh, I didn't know that. And, and that's actually the ripple effect because of how we, with the little that we do, it impacts, it can impact the world, really. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so important because, you know, what you're speaking about now is something we call in the networking space an elevator, elevator speech. Yes. And it's yes. actually bringing the, uh, the, the emotional connection to what you do so yes. that, you know, so that you yes. make a difference. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So tell me, I, I mean, it's now 2020, you've been in this space for almost, you say 30, 30 years. Sorry, I'm yes. giving your age wow. away, Sigrid. Yeah. yeah, you've been in this space for about 30 years. I mean, over the years, have you seen the role of women in the engineering field um, evolve? And are there enough women in this space? Wow, great, great topic. Thanks for bringing this up. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Nishani. But th this is very, actually very close to me as well. Yeah. Um, and, and so much so that I signed up in my company for the inclusion and diversity committee as okay, well. Okay. Yes, because it's, it's very important as well. Because in, in today, if we, if we just think about diversity per se, yeah. you know, what, what is diversity um, and why is it important? So people mis misconstrue diversity as a race thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, we want to get people of color. No, it goes beyond just color, uh, because you know, if, if you if you even if you get people from two different race groups, but if they yeah. think the same, you're not going to get new ideas. Yeah. So the idea behind diversity is to get different ideas coming to the table. And, and there's statistics out there, there's white papers that companies uh, who operate from a diverse point of view outperform their competitors who don't. And there's yes. statistics out there as well. So from a, from a diversity point of view in the engineering field, we have youngsters and we have old men. So yes. from an age point of view, we have that diversity. We have millenniums, we have, we have middle-aged men, yeah. we have uh, old men. So diversity from a from a male point of view, that's not the issue. Uh, from a race point of view, in terms of males, I think we are there uh, because a lot of uh, uh, whites and non-whites, even blacks, we are all working together. But from a female point of view, that's where we've got a lot of work to do in the engineering field. Um, in the years that I've been in, in the field, um, we've... Uh, we try as far as possible to give females the, the push preference. And when I say this, I don't mean it in a derogatory way that uh, they need special treatment because the, the last two recruits uh, for me were females um, yeah. uh, that, that I brought into, into our company. And I can tell you, they've, they got their job on merit, not, not because they were female. Mm -hmm. they, they interviewed, they interviewed the best, their presentation skills were the best. Um, it, it, I just felt like they, they tried extra hard to, mm. to, to get the job, um, yeah. but they shine. And, and, and the thing is as well with females, you know, they have so much more to deal with 
than yeah. than men. Um, and 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 again, I'm I'm not brushing all men the same because we have single fathers out there. Yeah. Who a very very dear friend of mine as well is a single father, and I know what he goes through as well. So. So any parent who is performing both roles, I, I salute you, whether you're a man or whether, whether you're a female. Yeah. So, uh, but definitely in the engineering field, we've got a lot to do, but fortunately the major corporates, uh, they've even created positions called diversity and inclusion, even directors now, uh, yeah. or chief officers, where this is serious stuff. And, and it's, and it's more than a marketing thing. It's, it's beyond that, because as I said, it's a business imperative. Once we've got diversity, and, 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 and there's an important thing, because when we talk about diversity and inclusion, the, yeah. those two terminologies, and you have people who just loosely use it. There, there is a saying, uh, and let me see if I can get it right. It says, uh, diversity is being invited to the party, but yeah. inclusion is being asked to dance. Yeah. So in the workplace as well, uh, and, and I always say this, companies do, please do not approach it from a KPI point of view. Oh, we need X amount of blacks. Oh, we need X amount of females. And then you get those KPIs and you sit back and you rejoice and you say, hey, we've met our quota. But if yeah. you're not bringing the people as part of the culture of the organization and giving yeah. them the opportunity in decision making, then you're failing on the inclusion side. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and that's so important because I think women bring a different kind of leadership and a different kind of thinking, which I, which I think brings the diversity, but also brings a, a fresh perspective. Because um, mm -hmm. let's face it, you know, men are from Mars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's important that you say that as well, uh, of, of what they bring to the table. Um, so if, if you, in my experience as well, I've found, uh, I've, I've been in situations where we have ladies who try to compete at the level of men and as yeah. a result start to behave like yeah. that. So, you know, my advice is, you know, be yourself, you know, whether you're a male or a female, you know, you need to be yourself because what we want is your authenticity coming to the table. That's yeah. what we want. Um, and I've seen situations as well where, you know, women dress up like men and come to the boardroom table and you yeah. want to behave like a man. And, you know, as well, each to, to their own, but, but we need that authenticity to come, to come through as well. So I'm not telling people how to dress, anything of that sort, but, if, if, you, if you love to wear dresses uh, and if your job permitted, but you feel now, oh, I have to wear a suit to compete yeah. with the men. And that, for me, that's a no-no. Uh, yeah. you know, bring yourself to the job. Um, also, like when you look at any job, there's, there's two aspects. Um, well, there's many aspects, but I always try to bring it down to two. One I call technical. Uh, when I mean technical, I don't mean yeah. technology. And the other is behavioral. So yeah. technical is how to do the job. It's uh, if, if, if I'm a CEO, what do I need to know how to do my job? If I'm an yeah. engineer, what do I know? But then the behavior aspect as well, yeah. that comes in. So the, 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 te the technical part you can teach, you can yeah. teach a person how to do a job, but the behavior part, that is what you need to bring. That's the authenticity you need to, to bring because that's where the ideas come from. And, and that's where the interaction comes from as well, because yeah, people yeah. want to to deal with people who are authentic. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, I have a um, a, a formula, uh, a formula that I that I often um, think of, and uh, I've le I learned very early early in my career as well, which is relationship, which is the behavioral aspect. Relationship pl plus process, R plus P. Um, oh yes. Which is yes. R plus P, the process, you speak about it as a technical side, but R plus P is equal to I, which is impact and influence. Okay. And without the, you can be as, as technically sound as you want, but mm. if, you, if you don't have the EQ um, to make relationships work um, in the mm. workplace, then, then, then one loses impact and influence, you know? Mm. Um, but Sabrina, now I wanted to come back to a very significant point that you make making. And I mean, I, I think, you know, 
uh, this program to, to date is and succeed as such um, really honors sort of everyday heroes, you know, and we've, just, we've been speaking a lot about women and, uh, and what, and the role of women in, in South Africa, and even now the role of women in engineering. But I just want to pause a moment to acknowledge single fathers and upright men, good men, who are standing up for the truth, who are speaking up against, who volunteer in their workspaces like you do, um, to, um, to be part of diversity and inclusion. Good men who take on female partners uh, in business, who raise children single-handedly. There are great men out there and we must pause a moment just to acknowledge them, you know? So thank yeah. you for highlighting that yeah. and, and for bringing that up. Tell me, what are your views on, um, on women in leadership positions? That's a great one as well. Um, and, and that is where I always stress the authenticity part of it as mm -hmm. well. So um, when, um, you know, traditionally, when you look how businesses were built as well, it was a driver mentality, you know, that driver, yeah. driver mentality. Yeah. And that's what companies were looking for as mm -hmm. well, you know, drive people hard. Uh, the results were the most important thing, okay. you know, in, yeah. in today's world, it's, it's beyond that. Uh, yeah. you know, it's beyond just the results. It's people, you know, people were just used as commodities, you know, use yeah. them, hire them, fire them. Uh, in, in today's world, it's, it's different. It's, it's really yes. different. The, uh, the, you know, the, the image of a company as well is, is quite important. And that is why I stress the point of leadership. When, mm. when women come into leadership, bring your own to the table you know do yeah. not do not try to run it like the previous man who who ran who ran that and and also uh, in in terms of women in leadership it's not just about us focusing on the women uh, the people reporting into that lady also needs to to do a rain check uh, need to to check themselves as well if they and their beliefs yeah. uh, because because they tend to block or, or not follow the, the instructions or the vision uh, of the woman. So it's, it's a real ecosystem that the, the entire company culture really needs yeah. to evolve with it. And that's why I said earlier on, do not, for companies, for people who are bringing, uh, you know, especially women in the leadership role, yeah. is don't do it as a tick box exercise. Yeah. Um, because the lady has got a lot to bring to the table, you know. I want to use the word empathy as well because it's a natural yeah. it's a natural you know uh, uh, trait of of a lady. I've seen it. Uh, my boss at the moment is a lady as well, um, and I I enjoy working with her. and And I've had male bosses as well. I've got males reporting to me. I've got two females reporting into me as well. And that dynamic is so important. There is no like one fit to uh, yeah. everybody. So uh, we need more though. We need more women yeah. in leadership. There's, yeah. my, wife, my wife always has this uh, little joke going on with, with my son. And um, my son is not chauvinist, but, but what he does, he likes to push the buttons for, to yeah. my daughter and my wife just to get some excitement going during lockdown. And, uh, and my wife will, will now start quoting statistics as well. And look at yes. the countries. Um, that are female presidents. Oh. They've got the lowest infection of COVID and, yes, and, yes. and, 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 and she'll just go on and on. And I just love watching this, 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 Dynamic. not argy buddy, but the debate goes on uh, between them. But, but it's there as well, you know, for people who, uh, who doubt it, you know, there's, there's white papers, there's case studies out there as well. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to just put everybody into a box, but um, but but for me personally, we need to see more more women in in leadership, and companies to give them a chance as well. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and not because of diversity and inclusion, but simply because it's the right thing to do. You know, Absolutely. I always I, I always um, I always maintain you know being in, being in human resources for for this many years, I always say like just do the right thing just do the mm -hmm. right thing you know yeah yeah, yeah. but uh, second you know one of the things that um that uh, got my attention on social media was mm. the publishing and the releasing of your new book um of your first book <laughs> fork yeah. in the road and i'm wondering with, with this 
oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. With this first sleep, first sleep, with this. I mean, you've obviously got a corporate job, you've got a family, um, you've got a team that you mentioned. How on earth did you find the time to write this book and what inspired it? No, oh, that's, that's a great one. Um, I, you know, it has to go way back. But, but if, if, I, if I start right from the beginning and then I'll just be like the only one speaking here, so I'll just <laughs> answer, answer your question and I'm sure the, the story from the past will, will definitely come, come through as yeah. well. Um, so, you know, for many years, I, I had my own demons and I was looking for answers for myself. And uh, yeah. through, you know, many years of uh, personal development, spiritual pursuit, um, mm. I started to find, find my answers. And then, you know, at, at Bry's or at parties or whenever I got a chance, I'll always be talking to people about what's the latest course I went for or what's yes. the latest book I read, but there was no structure to it. I was always just, you know, blading along about what I, what I heard and, and, and learned. So, but then when I was 24, my dad passed away and, and I was really confused about uh, life and death. And, you know, you start asking all these ex existential questions about, you know, what's the whole purpose of life and things like that. But anyway, after many years, uh, things started to fall into place for me and what I did was I started to create because I'm from engineering field in order yeah. to explain it simply I started to create different models of all the different things that I learned um, you know about the human body about about life in general yeah. and then also a a methodology of how to succeed in life yeah. so I had all this all over the place and just you know like on a napkin note, just draw it and, and yeah. tell people about my, my discoveries. And then um, a, a very close friend of mine one day said, you know what, why, why don't you just do a talk? Uh, yeah. I've got clients. Um, she, she was in the insurance field and she said, I've got clients and I'm sure they would like to listen to you. Now for the first time, I thought, ooh, if I'm going to give a speech about this, I I need to structure it because when I'm talking to somebody, I'll start from the end and I'll be all over yes, the place. Yes. And that was the first time I started to structure it. So I'll start from one point and I get, get to the next point. And that carried on for a while. And, and I never advertise it. I, if somebody wanted it, I'd, I'd yeah. do that. And uh, so somewhere along the line, I said, you know what? I, I can see a book in here. And yes. I started to write it. The book was called The Game of Life. Uh, yeah. it, it was many years ago, but, and I promise you, I was battling with it because I was writing it as a textbook. Um, yes. So my, my, my game of life framework, I was writing it as a textbook. And oh, in engineering some, language. Yeah, 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 that's it, <laughs> because I'm engineering my game of life. So, uh, so I had all the chapters, some chapters, you know, it was like half, others were three quarter, and I was yeah. battling to fill it. I was really battling yeah. to fill it. And, and it just took, took a back, backstage. And then in 2015, uh, I had a car crash and um, I broke three bones in my neck and I cracked my skull in two places. So yeah. uh, I uh, spent three months at home contemplating, thinking, ah, oh, maybe I should revisit this book, but I never bothered. But then yeah. a lot of people were visiting me and I was yes. talking about my game of life framework and yes. we were talking about all of this. So then I realized, whoa, hang on, yeah. Uh, and, and not at that point, because the realization was two years later yeah. that uh, I know how to package this because all the conversations I had with the people, I can package this in, into the book. And, and that's yeah. the book that, that I've got here now. So, yeah. uh, and, and, and I must admit, you, you asked me the question, you know, how did I write it, you know, being yes. so busy? Because when I started writing it as well, I, I, I do a lot of travel. Um, yeah. So 80% of this book was written in aeroplanes and at airports. So yeah. I used good, I made good use of that time and I was just yeah. polishing it at, you know, at home on weekends or, um, yeah. But, yeah. but that's, that's where you find the time. You know, if you really want to do something, you'll, you'll find the time. Yeah. So it's, it's about carving out the, or making that time for something that you, you're passionate yes. about. And tell yes. me, in, in, in the book, somewhere along the line, you get your name, um, Jackie. Is that right? Uh, yeah, tell true. us a little bit about that. 
I'm going to spoil it now for my readers, but uh, I won't, <laughs> tell, the entire, I, I won't tell the entire story, so I won't spoil it for the readers, yeah. but I'll give you the clues. It was high school. It was gymnastics. <laughs> so I was 15 years old. Um, so during a gymnastics session, I'm not going to say what happened, but the name Jackie came up there. And I thought it was just a nickname for that training session. Yes. So 1985 till now, it's stuck. It's stuck. It's stuck. So 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 here's a bit of uh, promoting. If you want to know the whole story, it's in here. <laughs> get the book. And and how does one get the book? I mean, are you going to put um, after this? Would you publish it under my um, under the comments so people who want to get it will know where to get it. Yeah, absolutely. So I just I just got an email today uh, from my agent. So uh, uh, he said I must just um, wait for the delivery. So uh, I ordered quite a few books, which will be delivered uh, to me. It's also going to be online. It'll be available on Amazon as well. Um, and once it's available there, then I'll I'll do the proper marketing. And uh, so all along now, just creating awareness, letting people know that there's a book coming out, uh, building my email list. Um, yeah. So we'll, we can put in uh, my, my web in uh, details in the comment section here as well. So put your name in on, on the list and when it's ready, we'll send you the links. Great, yeah. great. Thank you so much, uh, Sagan. And um, mm. I, I want to ask you, you know, you have a 20, 23 year old daughter, right? Is your daughter 23? Uh, 23 year old son. Yeah, 23 year old son, so 19, yeah. 19 year old daughter. And I mean, yeah. uh, what, what is it that you would like to see change? Um, she's just got a couple more years before she enters the workspace. Um, what, what kind of workspace do you want her to enter into? You know, um, one of the things that uh, people who know me, uh, they know me for, there's a slogan which, uh, I don't think it's unique, but it's the way I live my life and the way I like other people to live it. It started off as my life, my way. Yeah. And, and then eventually I changed it to your life, your way, out of respect to others, because like my life, my way, it's like, it's all about me, you know? Yeah. So, and that's how I brought my children up. Um, I brought them up in such a way that to not impose my beliefs, my belief systems onto them. Mm. So, uh, from from many many things from even from a religious point of from everything i'm i'm trying to to let them learn on their own um i do tell them of all the mistakes that i've made in in life yeah. as well because the one thing i know is change is inevitable we all know that and then also controlling the outside environment as well that is where stress comes from so the only yeah. thing you can actually control is yourself. And that's how I try to bring my, my children up is for them to understand and teach them the tools to be able to control themselves, control their stress level. So no matter where they find themselves, they will be able to adapt to that. So that's the one thing. Now, to your, your question as well, what I would like to see though in work environments, in companies is people to embrace other people, you know, embrace other cultures, yeah. embrace, uh, other individuals, because Bishani, you know, you you know, uh, you know, I know your story as well. Um, you know, I know I, we grew up in the same in Tongat as well. The hardships mm. that that we went through, you know, you there's other people like that. So in a work environment, there are people. Everybody has got a story. You know, everybody, no matter how rich you are, how poor you are, everybody is yeah. going through something. Yeah. And what I would like to see is people, you know, being tolerant of other people as oh. well. And wherever my daughter finds herself in, you know, she's a tough girl. We, we grew up to be tough. Um, so whatever comes her way, you know, I know she'll be able to, able to handle it. But I would like to see, uh, you know, my daughter in an environment where women are respected, women are yes. given an opportunity. Um, you know, you, you compete, you compete on, on, on an equal footing mm. um, and, and where she, and most importantly for me is where she finds herself in a, in a company 
or or well we know what she's studying now and that's that's what she's going to do but wherever she is or whichever country she she finds herself in is to be able to express herself uh yeah you know and and live joyfully uh mm. and because one of the the most important things you know for me is life experience yeah really that's ultimately that's what we here for so in the game of life framework uh the everything are tools around the game of life framework the goal setting the value determination everything around the game of life framework is geared for one thing and one thing only is the life experience um mm. so so there is a component in my game of life framework called the life life experience and that is why i keep you know uh, drumming into my kids is that the decisions that you make always think about the life experience that you want to have one day yeah. you know the last component of the game of life framework is legacy but mm. that is not as important as the way the you live your life the because everyday. the legacy is how people are going to going to remember you but the life experience that that's the unique thing you know you can't you can't have somebody else's life experience and you can't no. take your life experience and give somebody else yeah so yeah that is key and 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 also you know i tell my children as well you know you don't have to put up with nonsense so mm. you need to be living your life in such a way that you need to carve your destiny in the way you want to so if you find yourself in a situation where you're uncomfortable you see what you can do to change it but if you can't you don't need to stay there you yeah. know you, it it's it's one door closing for another door opening yeah yeah mm. and then, you know i always say you know it's a cliched uh, quote but if respect is not being served at the table leave the table there you go leave Good the one. table excellent leave the table yeah excellent. you know um I, i mean you know we have the 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 connection of coming from the same uh, uh, high school and many of our educators are still around from back in the 80s you know and those were uh, great great educators i mean education mm-hmm. in our country has been is is really um is really something that i think we were fortunate to have such great educators um tell us a little bit um you know is there a message that you want to send them or that you would like for them to know they're going to get to know on monday because <laughs> i've been invited i've actually been invited to speak at tongara on monday okay. so Wonderful. It, it's all through this uh, through the book so um uh, uh, maggie one of the educators at tonga secondary school yeah she reached out to me as well um so i'm going to be donating a few books to the library and i hope that the students uh, read it um so they can get a little bit of history in yes. there and uh, then the principal called me as well uh, and invited me so monday is world teachers day Um, wow. so there's an event at Tonga High School and and I'm really really honored to go back and and speak to the teachers because the the message for me is going back to like the engineers earlier on yeah. when you are doing your job you 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 are just so busy trying to do the mechanics of that job so if yeah. you're a teacher you you busy doing what's required your prep work your you you preparing for your lessons then you deliver your lessons you are giving tests exams you are marking them so yeah. you're doing the mechanics of it i can tell you something uh, uh, when there was a presentation that i did when i was invited to speak at bria technical college and my opening slide was it, it was a meme there um of a cartoon character pointing at a chalkboard so if you can yeah. read this thank a teacher So that's the importance you know that that's the fundamental career yes. all careers are born if not for a teacher you're not going to have the other careers so fundamentally they are the the I wouldn't say I'm not going to say the most important but leads to all other other careers so for mm-hmm. teachers my message would be is you know don't get too caught up in the mechanics as well you know when you are standing in front of that class or maybe even remotely now via uh, like zoom, zoom just take a little bit of time and visualize a few years into the future because mm. you you your a piece of you is going to be in every child's life that you change yes. and and it was so 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 touching for me because when i left school back in 1987 give the age yes. away again 
and my coach, uh, Steve Gopal, uh, yeah. I lost touch with him. And now through Facebook and marketing this book, uh, coach's wife reached out to me and then they got my number. Yeah. And uh, two weekends ago, he phoned me after all these years and we had a nice long chat. And I was so happy to tell him the impact that he's had in my life and he still yes. does. So yes. that's my that message is, to the teachers. You, you are impacting lives. Yeah, I remember mm. his dedication and uh, lots of athletes being at school at probably five in the morning. Um, yes. You know, wow. uh, but that meant that he had to be at that, that uh, you know, that's to it. meet that commitment. That's it, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, great. You know, we, uh, we speak a lot about um, wanting to make a difference in the world and wanting to make, yes. uh, you know, go back with succeed and just be able to plant seeds of hope. Yes, um, yes. One of the things that, that we do at Succeed is um, we look at uh, the violence against women because we believe that it's a violent choice uh, that women have to make if they have to sort of buy a sanitary towel versus a loaf of bread, you know. And unfortunately, many women... Um, are still making that choice in 2020. You know, with all the, the technology, we still haven't solved that issue. And so one of the things Succeed is doing is really getting a reusable uh, sanitary towel out to girls. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's a product that lasts a girl five years, up to five years, and keeps her in school, keeps her out of danger, keeps her out of violence. Uh, because she's not then alone at home in terms of the perpetrator. So if you'd like to get involved with that, please um, just drop me and uh, send me an inbox. Uh, I, I really am excited because many people have contacted me via WhatsApp um, to say that they would really like to uh, be a part of this as well. So we're looking forward to, to hearing for, you know, from you for that. Um, yeah, what is your view? Yeah, if, if, yeah. I, I just want to add, add to that, yeah. uh, uh, Nishani. You know, it, it's so sad that so many girls miss school. Uh, yeah. You know, they miss their education because, you know, during that one week, uh, they cannot go to school. And, and therein, you know, earlier on when I was talking about competitive advantage as well. So it stems right from there. Men already yeah. got a, a competitive yeah. advantage. And so, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people from my network on, on this call as well at the moment. Mm. So I'm reaching out to you as well. Please uh, help Nishani in this cause. Thank you. Thank you, Sagan. That's very generous of you to do. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, let's talk about what is your seed of hope that you would like to plant uh, tonight for South Africa, for the world, actually? That's a really, really great question because I think all of us needs to be needs to be thinking thinking about that. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna answer you uh, in terms of my just one component of my game of life uh, framework. So when when I put this game of life framework together or engineering the game game of life uh, seminar, yeah. Um, as I said, there's so many different components. And there is one in there, and I was battling to get a name for it. And because I couldn't get a name for it, I called it the Sago Pyramid after myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. so, so like a pyramid, the, the Sago Pyramid is made up of a number of components. So if you remember, you know what a pyramid is, it's yeah. built up of many layers. Yeah. The bottom layer is the foundation and it goes all, all the way up. Yeah. So the bottom layer is the physical system. Okay. And in the physical system, there's only three things that you can manage which is your time, energy, and money. That's all you can. When you are young, you've got lots of time, you've got lots of energy, but you've got no money. Yeah. And then as you grow up, you know, you have energy, right? You start to amass uh, money, but not enough, but you don't have enough time as well. But when you get to old age, hopefully you've got energy, but people say, when I'm old, I've got money, hopefully, but I don't have the energy, but I've got lots of time. So, so we need to be managing that. So the next level comes a value system. So yeah. it's supported by your value system. And values are, you know, people confuse values, really. They think of ideals, like honesty is my value or integrity. No, those yeah. are ideals. And when it comes to values, you know, everybody has got different hierarchy of values of what's most important to least, to least important. Yeah. So if your children are highest on your value system, 
you'll spend your time, energy, and money on your children. If your car is highest in your value system, you'll spend your time, energy, and money on your car. Yeah. So if education is high in your value system, that's where you will spend, spend it. Right. So the next one is called the belief system. So your, if you've got your values in order, it's your beliefs now will either hold you back or let you go ahead in life. Mm. And those beliefs now will lead to you making decisions. Okay and or not making decisions yeah. and those decisions will lead to actions or inactions right and then now those actions will lead to what i was calling the life experience so yeah. all of that leads to your life experience the way you live your life and then the last component is the legacy is how you will be remembered yeah the legacy is not about uh, when you die and what they put on your tombstone legacy is every time you meet somebody so when we start talking about seeds of hope and yeah. what we wish to give back, oh. I explain the pyramid from the bottom up because that's yeah. how when I coach somebody, I explain to them why their life is the way it is. Why mm. are they battling? Mm. Why are they enjoying themselves? Why are they not enjoying their career? I start from the yeah. bottom up. But when you want to transform your life, I start from the top <coughs> and I go down. And that question that you asked me sits right on the top of it is yeah, so your legacy is what hope do you want to give back in yeah. terms of your life what do you want to give back for me i'm a teacher i'm a speaker that's mm. what i try to do every opportunity i get whether it's my corporate job whether i'm in in front of people away from a corporate job mm. that is what what i do what my my hope for everybody is you know even even if you don't come across my framework Try to develop your own framework. Try to yeah. try to build a type of life for yourself that you are always contributing. You know, they, they say there is no uh, passengers on spaceship Earth. Everybody yeah. needs to be contributing. You know, while while we are, and the only way you contribute to to spaceship Earth is through your life experience and through your interactions with other people. Mm. So, you know, I I would sincerely hope that people take the time sit down, think consciously of the impact they want to make to the planet. And it doesn't have to be a bold, audacious goal. That will be great, you know, to think yeah. of solving the world problems. But it can start as simply as, how am I going to bring up my children? Uh, yeah. How am I going to be a husband to my wife? How am I going to be a person at work? If whatever I'm doing every day, am I contributing to the better of everybody's life or I'm holding people back. That, that is my hope for people. And in doing that, they must be living their life their way. And if everybody could live their life their way, you know, we won't have to be trying to help somebody else because they are already living their life the way they want to, to, to live. And then also with, with people thinking about other people, we we won't have the inequalities that we do have on this planet because right now we know the the divide between the rich and poor is just getting bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger because yeah. it's greed it's it's big corporates just thinking about the bottom line as well so i, I would love for humanity to get to a point where people care about each other again and companies are run by people not mm. boards of of directors uh, who, who are always worried about, about the bottom line. You know, there is a, uh, uh, you know, a, a saying where they talk about headcount. Oh, now it's, we're going to, we're going to, oh, we're going to get rid of yeah. 300 heads or 5,000 heads. It's so easy to get rid of heads. But when you start thinking about hearts and start counting hearts, now it's a bit different. Now, how am I going to go and retrench mm. 1,000 hearts, you know? We need to make a plan. We, we need to, to come up with some sort of idea of, uh, of saving the company. So yeah, this, this is a great, great question, Nishani. For, for me is, you know, it's, it's people need to be caring about other people and, and not being so self-centered uh, yeah. thinking about themselves. Yeah, you know, one of you, you, you've made a very pertinent point. So thank you for that. And, and it's so important to be, um, to be, to be putting measures into place where we're actually doing this um, and where we move from independence to interdependence. Because mm. in the circle of life, um, 
we are all in this together and we're all mm. connected you know yes. i um uh, and you know that's what makes me so proud of uh, of succeed and and the way that we work because mm. one of the things that is intrinsic not just as an ideal or a value but is that it's intrinsic to the dna of how we how we are structured yes. and many yes. many of you will know it is that we are not about wealth creation um, yes. we are we are more about wealth distribution and so we mm. rise together you know yes. and we create opportunities for other people to rise together because when you do diversity and inclusion you know that the playing fields are not equal you know yes. that that people don't have the e equality um, yes. and they have barriers to entry you know yes. so so one of the things that we have done as an entrepreneurship is create a model where we're working with agents um, mm -hmm. And allowing allowing entrepreneurs to come alongside and be able to earn uh, earn a salary um, or earn some income and preserve yes. their dignity as human Absolutely. beings. I yes. think for me that is very important as we as we um, as we move into business, mm -hmm. as we move into uh, corporates, as we move into entrepreneurship. Um, it's important that we create for others. Um, mm. a realm that we can rise together, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yes. I, I, I'll tell you a story. Uh, I think it's really a, really a good one uh, because as well, it, it's to do with a lady as well. Yeah. So when I first started to do the seminar, it wasn't engineering your game, game of life. It was just the game of life. Yeah. So uh, one of the ladies... She was a girl back then, came to one of my talks. So her name is Nireshni. Um, yeah. I hope she's listening. So, so after the, the seminar was over, she stayed behind. And, and one of the problems she was having was reconciling uh, her religious beliefs with claiming the corporate ladder. Because yeah. uh, on one hand, her mind was saying, um, you know, we're not supposed to be attached to uh, materialism. But then what's the purpose of going and study? So we went through a coaching session, various coaching sessions. Long story short, I think she's one of my most successful students. Um, she's out of that shell. She's married. She's expecting a baby now in the next two weeks. Yeah. She ended up relocating to Johannesburg, bought a car, uh, married, um, traveled overseas because that was one of her goals. When we yes. looked at the girl that came for the talk, completely chalk and cheese. But that's not where the story ends. Because she got so much out of it, she held her own seminar. Yeah. And back then, she was not a public speaker. Yeah. She is now, because what she did was she swapped from behind the computer programming, she went into to become a trainer. So she yeah. stands in front of people and trains. So in Bryanston Country Club, she brought, I'm talking high profile speakers. She had uh, Arthi, which is the Chief Financial Officer of uh, JSC. She managed to yeah. get her there. She managed to get a doctor in there, a teacher. And then it was a whole, it was a full female event. So it was only females in there because that she wanted to give back. Yeah. And and the the speaker lineup was female. And then eventually she she called me to speak as well. So I was the, the last speaker in that event. I was really, really honored. But what was absolutely special for me was to see somebody who came in lost, did not just give up on life, went out, looked for answers, got her answers, but did not keep it to herself. Yeah. She empowered other people. She other empowered people. other people. And that is what Seeds of Hope is all about. Whatever we are doing, we need to be empowering other people so that it's that ripple effect the more people we can empower, we raise the consciousness of Spaceship Earth and we try to make it into a better place so that everybody can have a great life experience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sigrun. And you know, we are about to close because uh, an hour has flown by so quickly. And before I, before I go, I just wanna say October is Cancer Month. This is the month uh, where we raise awareness around cancer and uh, Kronos is um, marketing and uh, has got a great package um, together for the month of uh, October, where there is a, prep, you know, a, a, I will put that through on the comments at the end of this um, session. But I just want you, you to have a look at curcumin 
and uh, the effects it has on the body in, uh, in preventative measures and on the cells uh, in preventing um, cancer development. So um, it is our way of giving back, but it's also our way of um, letting you know that uh, there is something out there, there's people that are caring about you. And we also want to say, um, you know, it's going to be an amazing month. Um, we're looking forward to some great speakers and a great lineup coming up. And um, don't forget to please contact me and ask me about this product um, because I will, I will then let you have the details. Um, so thank you. In, thank in, you. in terms of that, Nishani, I, I just want to say, okay, in the game of life, there's two absolutes, being born and dying. Yeah. That is an absolute. Nobody's got a choice on that. We are all born. We're all going to die. There's one requirement, though, and that is to take care of the body. And so I honor you for, for sharing that, uh, that product because it's so important to take care of the body because, as I said, time, energy, and money. There's no use spending your whole life accumulating wealth and then get to the end of life and you've got this time, but you don't have the energy. Mm -hmm. so, so that's great. You know, and thank you for for looking for you know for for these sort of products and bringing it to us so that uh, we can take care of our our, our vessel. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Um, thanks, Segrin. And uh, as we come to the close, uh, I just want to say thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your insights and your nuggets. We will look forward to your your book in the future. Um, and uh, yeah, go fly the Tonga High flag high on Monday. Um, and enjoy the enjoy the time being back at school you know <laughs> yeah that's gonna be quite quite amazing yeah i think i'll wear my my uh my natal colors they still fit me my green coat <laughs> maybe i'll just do that <laughs> yeah so so please uh give our regards to everybody there and, and you know there's many people in Tongat that have left Tongat high but um, still really uh, have fond feelings and fond memories there Mm -hmm. And um, so thank you, thank you. And yes. on behalf of, uh, of Succeed, on behalf of my, um, my team behind the scenes, on behalf of Richard and Patrick, I just want to say thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. And as we say good night, may God bless you. May God make his face to shine upon you. And may hope forever light your way. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Nishani. Um, Thanks for bye -bye. having me. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you.